James, we're, we're sitting down with you during Black History Month. What, what does it mean to you this month? It's obviously um, an important month. Um, you know, but I think always, my always belief is, even in everything in, uh, in, in life, you know, it, certain things shouldn't be celebrated for, for a month. Um, I think, I believe it should be every day. You know, I, I tell my kids it's the birthday every day. I treat them like it's the birthday every day. And I think everything should be celebrated no matter what it is in life um, every day. But it's obviously important that um, that Black History Month is obviously celebrated. Um, but I do believe it should be obviously every single day. We have been looking at some of the first black players to, to have signed for Rangers, Walter Tull, Mohamed Latif. Can you imagine what it was like for those guys around 100 years ago signing for Rangers at that time? Obviously the guys that had signed back then 100 years ago sadly are going to, to war, so it's, that would have been crazy times, I would imagine. Um, but obviously, you know, Rangers had made that step and, you know, signed two black players, you know, 100 years ago, so... No, it's, a, it's obviously, back in them days, it's obviously, it would have been a, a massive and a huge set for a club. Mm -hmm. Rod Wallace in the, the late 1990s, early 2000s as well, he was at Leeds too. I know you grew up at a Leeds supporter. Is he someone that, that you remember playing? When you were yeah, obviously, obviously I remember him playing um, with Jimmy Floyd and, um, you know, the players that was obviously maybe the, the glory days of Leeds United uh, growing up. Um, with Lucas Radaby and um, people like that. For him to obviously play for Leeds and play for Rangers, obviously, I believe he's a, a, a Leeds fan as well, so obviously it touches home a bit that. Um, but yeah, I think he's a great testament as well of making the steps in, in the professional career. Who inspired you when you were younger? Was it the likes of those guys you just mentioned there? Yeah, I think the main one was obviously Lucas Radaby. He was uh, the captain of uh, Leeds United. And, you know, the year um, we won the league, um, I managed to get a FaceTime with him, um, which was a special moment for me because only seeing him when I was like a really young kid and being a season ticket holder as, as a young kid, seeing him play was obviously my dream. My dream obviously was to be a captain one day, just like himself, and then obviously to win the league and get a FaceTime from him on, on the day we picked up the trophy was a, a real special moment for myself. You touch on it, a dream to be a captain. You are the first black captain of Rangers. Does that, do you see that as a responsibility, as, as a role model, not just for young footballers, but, but young black footballers? I obviously see it as a, a responsibility for everyone. You know, I've got to lead by example. I think, you know, what the club does with everyone and anyone, um, you know, includes every diversity um, on the planet. So it's, it's about me just being a role model for everyone. Um, but obviously it would be inspiring for young black kids obviously seeing me in the position I am and hopefully it can inspire them to, you know, to, you know, push on and, and make the dreams come true. What was your experience like growing up playing football? Did you, did you ever come across any racism at all? Um, I came across um, l little bits, you know, when I was younger. Um, it was probably mostly playing for my school team um, because you know, when I was at Leeds United Academy, really young, from seven, you know, we, it was pretty much a diversity uh, club, you know, all the age groups had different backgrounds of players, um, but it was probably the school days where um, I was probably more impacted on, um, but it's something that I've always been brought up from my mum uh, to be really hard-headed, have broad shoulders and, you know, take it on the chin and, and not react and give the the satisfaction of uh, my reactions. Yeah, it must have been challenging though when you were so young. Yeah, obviously you can be, you know, young and not naive or maybe confused of why, you know, you're being targeted because of your skin colour, but it's something that you learn that, you know, words can't hurt you and it's about your actions and if you, you know, if you, if you're comfortable with yourself and you, you're trying to apply yourself the right way every single day, then you know, you'll always be happy for what you're doing. Yeah, I guess now that you, you're a father, you've got kids now, does that give, you give that same message to your children now, I suppose? Yeah, definitely, definitely, because you know, it, it still exists and it's, 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 it's important for m myself to, to be a role model for my kids and be, be there for them if any, anything happens to them in life. And yeah, I, I always say to them, you know, 
mostly every day is about just how you apply yourself and you know put yourself in good positions and keep yourself away from bad situations and you know then life should you know pave the path. One incident of course that people will remember is the match in 2021 against Slavia Prague and Glen Kamara. What was that like to be there obviously in that day, see that happen and be a captain at that moment too? Yeah, it was obviously a crazy one because I was I was injured at the time. Um, I was sat in one of the the club deck boxes, and um, I know obviously Glenn so well. And to see the reaction that I've never seen before from Glenn that day, I knew something uh, serious had happened. Um, and as the commotion started to go on on the pitch, I knew something obviously really bad had happened. So. Went down, went down the stairs straight into into the tunnel, and obviously got the the gist of what happened. And you know, my job from there has been a teammate and a and a friend was just to really support him um, because you know, expecting to play a professional game now, and you don't really expect that to happen. Uh, but it was sad that it did, and you know, obviously action was uh, later down the line was made. And you know, Glenn was uh, Glenn's story was, you know, believed, and the action was done. But it's still something that'll always sit with us, I think, until the day I die. You know, something like that, and seeing the impact it did have on, on one of my teammates. Looking at, at football and, and sport in particular, the squad here, there's obviously so many different people, different backgrounds, different religions. How powerful can, can football be in bringing people together? Yeah, I think it's very important. Um, you know, where the world's going and how progressive the world is now. And I think it's very important to, to include, you know, everyone and be, make sure everyone's inclusive in that. Um, you know, our campaign, which I've touched on before about everyone and anyone, you know, it, it, it brings everyone together and makes everyone included. Um, you know, it's great to see that the, the women's game is getting bigger and stronger, which is very important. And I think they benefit it from a lot. Um, and just seeing all, even the lads here, all from different religious backgrounds, you know, just catering for their needs, and it makes them feel more welcome, welcoming into the into the squad. So it's great to see. What do you do to, to make people feel welcome when they come here? Yeah, normally I'll always get the little heads up that someone um, is joining us. So um, I, I I make sure I uh, get the number, uh, send them a message, and you know, just welcome into Rangers and. Just explain how how good the group is, how great the club is, how great the fans are, and you know, just if they need anything, then just let me know. Because I've obviously been here a long time now, and I've got a lot of friends out there. So um, yeah, it's just making sure that the the more comfortable uh, they can be uh, when they arrive. There obviously is a, a different side of it now for footballers to deal with the sort of online social media side. What is that like? Yeah, it can be, it's, it's obviously very different compared to when I grew up as a, as a, as a young lad, even though I'm, I'm still young. You're still clearing I'm on still, that. I'm still very young, <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it, there's two sides of it. It can be good and bad. Um, you can agree with someone, you can disagree with something. Obviously, everyone's entitled to their opinions. Um, me personally, I don't take anything from social media. Um, you know, I can, I can accept a, a comment that disagrees, I can accept a comment that agrees with us, um, but it's, I don't really take notice because, you know, it doesn't really impact my life and, you know, I know what I have to do as, as a human, as a football player, as a, a dad, as a husband, I know what my responsibilities are and, you know, nothing will really change that. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, it's a flip of a coin with social media, um, but I tend to, to stay away from it. Mm -hmm. As a squad, or as players in a group, is it something that you ever talk about at all with the younger players? Or? Yeah, it is, because, you know, the younger generation tends to, to be more into social media because it's something that they grew up with. So it, it's somewhere where you have to be very careful, uh, you know, especially being at a, at a club that's got a lot of pressure uh, because we can, there can be a lot of outside noise um, 
and you know I've seen it in the past where people do get affected by that. Um, so it's about you know looking after any young lads that come through or you know still here and and just get, getting into the message that you know social media is not everything. Um, you know there's there's a life away from that and it's, it's just about training yourself and training your mentality to to not get affected by it. Obviously you spoke at the start about Black History Month and it not just being one month. What would you like to see done or what can happen moving forward? Yeah, like I, like I touched on before, it was it was a clip that I seen from Morgan Freeman that you know explained that Black History Month shouldn't just be celebrated in you know one month. It, it should be, you know, all year celebration. And like I said before, everything, you know, that is celebrated should be celebrated every day. Um, I think obviously moving forward, um, you know, I'd like to see it eradicated. You know, it's, I don't think there's any, any place in the world where it should exist. Um, you know, if that's sexism, racism, you know, nothing should should be out there and, and should be existing. That only brings negativity to to humans, basically. So, I'd love the world to be such a positive place. I know it, in the real world it it's not, but us as humans can always be be powerful in our actions and how we respond to one another, and that can be infectious to to other people. And hopefully, then you will get a better world.